every once in a while, it's fun to just do some really, really bad web design. I've created a mock resume in here. This is not my real resume because I am putting this up on YouTube and don't feel like sharing my real one. But my students have the assignment of creating a real resume that they are going to learn to style with cascading style sheets. And this will be the first time that they are applying cascading style sheets. So let's take a look at the HTML for my basic page. Now I'm actually in Firefox and I've changed my view settings under page style to no style so that you can see what the HTML code looks like without any styles attached. And then we can see the after. Here I have applied style sheets. Let's take a quick look at the style sheet. And yes, this is hideously ugly, I know. But we can see some neat properties that you can set using style sheets. I am using an external style sheet here. And if I go to the HTML, you'll see in the head tag of my HTML that I have linked to my external style sheet. And then we're going to just sort of break this down. I'm going to show you the CSS first and then I'll show you how it's applied to the page. I have the background here set with a background color of black. I have set the text color as white. I have Arial Helvetica Sans Serif, which actually is a user-friendly font. And I've set my font size to 1.2M. I tend to use this because it sizes well. I like M's better than pixels. An M 1M is the standard default font size for the browser that you're viewing. So I've set my font sizes to be 120% of the standard font size. And that actually is a good design technique on a black page with white lettering. I don't generally like black backgrounds, but they are useful, especially in photography sites or anything where you really want to focus on the content and you're not writing a lot. But if you are going to use text against a dark or a black background, I find that it is, makes it easier to read if you bump up the size a little bit. Then I've defined all of my heading colors to be this ugly shade of gold. And I've put a left padding of 10 pixels. Now I do use a pixel padding because my H tags are of different sizes and they would have indented different amounts if I did not set that to a standard value like a pixel. I wanted them all to be even and start at the same point. Then I have my H1. I overrode everything else with my H1 tag. I only have one in here. I have a thick solid border in bright green. I have a font size of 1.8M. I have padding of 15 pixels. That's how much space I have between my content and my border. And I've done a text align of center. I have a horizontal row. I tried to set the line height. This did not actually work. Color of blue and width of 95%. Those two features did work. This is a class. A class can be applied to anything by using a class equals. So it's something if you're going to use it in various places in your document. You'll see here that I am using it on my H4 tags where it overrides the yellow coloring. And I now have pink text. And then I have green which is working with an ID which should only be one because you should only have an ID of one in a document. So this ordered list has an ID of green and it gets a background of green and it gets a font color of really really super dark blue. So those are the styles that I've chosen. Let's take a look in the HTML. Close up the heading here and Firebug shows you some neat things. So I have my heading 1 and you can see here that it's showing me exactly what my layout is. My border was defined as 5. Let's go take a look up here at this. So we've got the border defined as 5. 
I've got the padding at 15. This is the actual content. And then I have a margin, which automatically was set to 28. That's just done automatically. I did not control the margin in any way. Then I have my address here in a paragraph format. I have a break which is making it not have a complete blank, break, uh, complete blank line between these rows. Um, I wanted a break so that I would not have a lot of space between them. I did not actually make my email a link. Let's go to the skills section. Skills is an H2 tag. Let's go over here and look at styles a minute. You can see when I have the H1 tag selected, it shows you which style, styles are applying and which ones are being inherited. The color was inherited, but I overrode the padding, so that's crossed out. And it shows you the inheritance and the inheritance from the body where it's inheriting that it's Arial, Helvetica, Sans Serif. Because if I did not further define it, it will just inherit those settings and all of the body text is in that font. Okay, so let's expand that area. I have an unordered list here. Right now the unordered list does not have anything overriding it, so it's just using the default body styles of color. Color here refers to font colors white, font family and font styles. Nothing real interesting going on there. I have my H2 employment. You can see that is being defined. When I define multiple ones with commas between them, then whatever styles I make will apply to everything in that list. I have an H3, still following the same options. EM is emphasis. Okay, this is right there, 2011 current. None of the styling has changed. The emphasis to make it italic, that's done with the HTML code. Strong here is making that bold. And here is where I have the ID green. So everything that's part of the ordered list, let's scroll down, that's right here. This is part of my ordered, ordered list. Everything that's part of that ordered list tag. Let's select it. It's a background of green and a new font color of dark blue. Let's show you where I'm using the class. I'm using the class in two places. I'm using them both on H4 accounts. If you're going to use something more than once, it should be a class, not an ID. A class you can use more than once. When you define that class, Let's select this. This is my pink text class. A class is defined with the dot in front of it. And then I set the color, the font family that went to a different serif font, a font size. So you can see it's serif because it has the little lines on it here. Sans serif is without the lines. Serif is with the line decorations, and it got a text indent of five pixels. Now, this green one, as I said, was an ID. An ID can there can only be one of them on the page. So this ID, when I select it, you can see an ID is done when you use the pound sign. So I have the ID of green, and I'm redefining the styles for that. So to review, let's go back to the CSS. You can redefine any tag with new style values just by using the tag name and then the list of attributes that you want for it. A class starts with a dot and an ID starts with a hash mark. There's more to it, but that's enough to get you started. It's enough knowledge to be just a little bit dangerous. Again, I do not think that this is a good design, but I do think it effectively shows you how CSS can significantly change the image, the way that a web page looks. 
to go from something like this to something like this is very powerful. In this particular case, I did not necessarily use those powers for good.